in your book, The Cheese Trap, how breaking a surprising addiction will help you lose weight, gain energy, and get healthy, you wrote a chapter called How Cheese Keeps You Hooked. Please explain what you meant. Uh, the dairy protein uh, has integrated into the protein molecule uh, opiate chemicals called casomorphins. The name comes from casein, C-A-S-E-I-N, and casein-like the casein derived morphine like compounds, casomorphins are in the protein. And so when you drink a glass of milk or eat some cheese, uh, the protein breaks apart and the casomorphins will go to your brain and they attach to the very same mu receptors that heroin attaches to. Now, they're not as strong. Um, the brain binding power for um, the uh, four, four carbon uh, casomorphin or four amino acid case, uh, casomorphin call, uh, called morphoceptin it's about one tenth that of pharmacy grade morphine. So it's not enough to get you arrested, but strong enough to make you hooked. And um, they, uh, these are, because they're in the protein, uh, the higher protein dairy foods, like particularly cheese, are very concentrated in casomorphins, and which is why cheese is more addictive than say a glass of milk. What can you do to prevent dementia, Alzheimer's and memory loss? Uh, one thing is get new parents. Um, part of it is genetic. Um, there is a, a gene called the ApoE epsilon 4 allele. And if both your parents had it and gave it to you, you know, your risk is multiplied by 10 or 15 fold. Um, so genetics plays a role, but that, that's the bad news. The, the good news is that, that despite genetic increased risk, diet and exercise do seem to play a huge role. And, and part of the reason we know that is there have been many observational studies that have looked at diet patterns. Uh, one of the real, really influential ones was called the Chicago Health and Aging Project, where they showed that people eating the most saturated fat, which is dairy fat and meat fat, um, had, oh, about two to three times higher Alzheimer's risk compared to other people. Um, so check that box, avoid the dairy fat and the meat fat. Uh, trans fats also, the trans fats, the partially hydrogenated oils used in cupcakes, um, donuts, that, you know, the, the old fryer grease that used to be hydrogenated in fats, and there's still some of that around, um, that increases risk in the same way. So getting away from animal products is a good idea. There is some evidence that uh, diets rich in vegetables and fruits can be helpful. Vitamin E rich foods, uh, nuts and seeds, um, can be helpful. You don't want to overdo it on them because they're really fatty, but even an ounce a day of nuts could be helpful. Lacing up your sneakers in uh, research at the University of Illinois appears to actually reverse brain shrinkage, particularly in the hippocampus, which is the center of memory. So putting it all together, plant-based diet, uh, don't overdo it on alcohol, but some studies have suggested there may be some benefit for mild drinking. It's, it's not a reason to start. Um, getting regular exercise, making sure you get adequate sleep every night. Those, those things do seem to really, really help. Is depression mental, physical, or both? And can you affect mood and depression with diet and lifestyle? Um, I think it's both. Um, it's, it is certainly physical um, because we learned decades ago that there were certain medications, particularly antihypertensive medications that could predictably cause depression. You would have a person who was under no new stress, nothing had happened in their life, but they started the pill and within a relatively short period of time, the bottom just fell out. And researchers have discovered that it's because the neurotransmitters that regulate mood happen to be very similar to the neurotransmitters that regulate your blood pressure. And if you turn them off, um, your mood can cascade downhill really rapidly. So the physical aspects of mood, I think are under appreciated. And they can be affected by everyday things. Alcohol is a downer. Um, so people who drink day after day will have more depression. Uh, caffeine is an upper, but it sort of uses up your feel good chemicals, so to speak. So that the next day you're in caffeine withdrawal and your mood is worse than it would be if you weren't using caffeine at all. Um, exercise is an antidepressant. And even with people who have a diagnosis of depression, if they exercise on a regular basis, it does have an antidepressant effect. And best of all is to exercise with other people um, because being around other people helps. But even if you're exercising all by yourself in your apartment on a treadmill, it still works. Um, it still has a good effect. 
Uh, lastly, we did a study with Geico, the, the car insurance company, where we used plant-based diets at work. And we used them for, to help diabetes and weight problems, but we discovered that mood improved, depression lessened, anxiety lessened. And other researchers have found much the same thing with plant-based diets. So um, take depression seriously. I mean, suicide is a real risk. And so you don't wanna fool around with this. But in addition to whatever other treatments you may be getting, there's every reason to use good, vigorous heart pumping exercise to the extent that you can safely do it and follow a completely low fat plant-based diet. Don't forget your B12 because your brain needs that too. Do we need to supplement to get enough DHA or omega-3 oils? Uh, probably not, but I think it's a, a, a legitimate question. Um, your body has all the enzymes that are required to make DHA. DHA, which is a 22 carbon omega-3 fat that the brain needs, and it has other uh, roles in the body too. And it's built from alpha linolenic acid, which is in many, many plants. Um, if you send some broccoli to a laboratory, they'll say, they'll, they'll tell you, it doesn't have a lot of fat in it, but, but a surprising portion of it is omega-3, uh, a proportion of the fat that's in there. And so if you eat lots and lots of these things, you'll get traces of the omega-3s that you, your body can, through the enzymes it has, lengthen from 18 carbons to 20 carbons to 22. Problem is that that lengthening process is slow um, and it's made slower if you're eating lots of other fats that occupy those enzymes and take their attention away from, um, from the fats you're trying to lengthen. Um, so with that in mind, there are some people who supplement and I wouldn't necessarily tell them not to. There are potentially some risks. Uh, prostate cancer does seem to be higher in uh, men who are taking or who have high blood levels of DHA. Nobody knows, or at least no, I, I do not know why that is. We have seen this consistently enough that it appears to be a real effect, but we don't know the mechanism for it. Um, the, the, uh, the argument for supplementation, is there some suggestion that people who have low levels of DHA are at higher risk for Alzheimer's? And so what some people will do is they'll get tested. They'll use a company like Omega Quant and you put a drop of blood on a little card and you send it to them and they'll tell you what your DHA blood level is. And then you could supplement and see how it changes. So um, stay tuned. I think we need more research to really sort these things out. Uh, 